Hello YouTube, it is Absolute Zero, and I'm joined by a special guest, um, known to y'all as Outlaw Beats. Um, yeah, let them know a little bit about yourself, Outlaw. Um, not too much to know, but I am a producer and engineer um, here local in Tallahassee, and I... Uh, you know, been doing it for a while. People think I'm alright, so. <laughs> yep, that's me. He's humble, but he is the best engineer ever on the planet. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> <laughs> Working on it. But yeah, we're here today to talk about a very special album, and that is going to be Outkast's third studio album, Aquemini. Um, this came out in 1996. No, and it's 98. It's 98? 98. Uh, AT Aliens was 96. Oh, never mind. Excuse me. This album <laughs> came out in 1998. So I was right. I was, I was the camera was rolling there. when I said that, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this is, this is what editing is for. Uh, it's, to, it's to ensure that my mistakes never make it to the audience. Bam. So, yes. <laughs> I forgot about that part. Yeah. Yeah. The mm. album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, after the success of the first two albums, they had a little bit more time, creative freedom to make something a little bit more different, a little bit more experimental. This album saw a transition for the group into more active role in producing their own beats as opposed to um to just you know getting beats from who was their main organized noise organized noise i was like right at the tip of my tongue but i couldn't yeah well, well I organized noise did um the first album and then they did some production on um on the uh it's the aliens, but th this was definitely the first one where they produced most of it, and it was like trying to bring out that sound, um, their new their own sound. Yeah, and I think you know, obviously they learned things through organized noise, who were incredibly immensely talented. I mean, they produced also produced waterfalls, this amazing classic song, and other yeah, outcast songs as well. But the um, they were people were confused because they kind of came out as like. Um, more just like a typical southern artist yeah. before as a rap persona and then like typical rapping and then they expanded with AT aliens and really kind of you know they're aliens and, and, yeah. they, and, and then on this one it was kind of like people didn't know what to expect and it seems like even as they continue on past uh, past this album Equimini, um each each album kind of an alien and, 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 I can't think of it, say the word uh, annihilated the the last the mm. fans of the last one in a sense <laughs> but there was other fans a lot of fans yeah. who just there were newer fans and you know fans that enjoyed that versatility each album was its own and this album it also addresses a lot if you yeah. listen you know listen to it lyrically it addresses a lot about what I mean right out from the top of this um, like the return of the gangster you hear it and like it's a whole thing is about like now we're, you know, we could be whoever we want. And it's yeah. not necessarily, we're not going to be confined to the box that you put us in. Yeah. And and that was a lot of the message that was being conveyed to that. And that was like an overriding theme, I think. And, you know, Quim and I being both of their, um, you know, uh, what do we call them? Zodiac oh, Zodiac, uh, yeah, yeah months or whatever. Yeah, yeah right. Zodiac signs. But <laughs> they put them together and it was really, they wanted to be them. So yeah. like it wasn't like they of course they work with other people. There was tons of live musicians who worked on it, um, but they really wanted to put their stamp on it and and be a mixture of who both of them are, which is very two different, different artists. People, I mean, yeah, very like, different people, artists, yeah, um, and personas and and how they're perceived. And I I think they have both a mixture. You know, they have such a good combination together, you know, on all yeah. their material, but it's, you know, especially this one. Yeah, they, they're one of the most cohesive 
and you know solid rap groups ever. Well, I, I think mean, you know, I, you know, you co- can... it depends on what you define as cohesive too, because like yeah. a lot, you'll see it. You know, there's so many rap groups that a lot of the artists sound the same, in them, yeah. you know, and while they're both southern, um, you know, the message and the delivery and what they came through on each song was very different. Like, yeah, you know, you will hear all these collaborations of people or um, groups. And it's like everybody's saying the same thing. They sound mm. the same. They're saying it the same way. And it's not really interesting. Whereas like Outkast, it seemed like they were at odds with each other. Which actually, you know, at times they actually they were. were. Yeah. And so, I mean, not as much as like maybe some of these groups are, ba- you know, rock yeah. bands I hear about. But <laughs> like, uh, you know, at least from a musical standpoint, but they were like very different. And, and I think this was kind of like showing that you could be different and still work together and you mm-hmm. could still and create and it you could be different you could listen to this song even though it could be go one direction one way and one direction the other way and the next yeah. uh, as the song goes continues on in the same song you could still like the whole song so like yeah. as a fan so this was about being themselves and i think in the same token giving that expression to other people to you know, be themselves that's dope um so yeah so where were you when you first heard this this album um you know i'm not 100 percent sure but if i had to probably take my best guess i'm pretty sure i heard it while i was in band i play saxophone and um one artist i work with fleetwood he was in the band with me as well um another guy uh, brian williams uh played uh, tuba and uh, I think someone else as well. Um, like we always listen to you know music when we go on these band trips. So we go on a band trip and we had a boom box in the in the um, uh, nice. in the bus. Yeah. And I mean, I, I we were such like punks about it, like just like blasting our music on the bus <laughs> like that. But I mean, everybody liked it, so everybody you know kind of appreciate musical taste. I'm pretty sure I heard it on that trip and then like just various times uh, rosa parks was huge yeah and that song was just like i remember that song. so like i mean you would heard it a lot you know just in passing here there you'd just be at the franchise you'd be you know um hanging out wherever and you just hear it so i don't remember i didn't actually own it until later on um and actually somebody gave it to me or something. somehow I came about it into and it, it came into my possession and, yeah. I was like, and that's actually when I think it was probably well, after I got I was in college and I um I got to hear the whole I actually ha- owned the CD and then I listened to it again and then again and again and I was like wow this is like more even more incredible than what I originally you know had heard it before so it wasn't like one instantly like I I, I um you know Heard it and I owned it and I you know listened to it five hundred million times. But over um, over time, I think I appreciated it more over the you know next few years after. And then as they were releasing more material, I was like, wow, you know, as great as I thought that material was at the time, I listened back on this and I was like, this is the best mm, um, yeah know, material. So it wasn't like a you know for this album for me it wasn't something. I mean, I mean, as soon as I heard it, I thought it was great. Yeah, it wasn't anything like I. Didn't think, it, but um, it didn't grow on me as much. And I think I wasn't, you know, I was also listening to like No Limit at the time. Yeah, yeah. It was a time that the South was really, as far as you know, hip hop music was starting to come out. But it, then again, the South had a reputation of um, a certain type of music, and it didn't necessarily have a lot of um, thought provoking messages behind it and stuff like yeah, that it's yeah. more um, either party music or gangster music mm. or you know and then slowly after after this it turned into like the bling bling era yeah, um, yeah so this yeah. is right before that um so i i feel like the the impacts of Clem and i later on didn't didn't hit till after that kind of had passed but the um you know Clem and i was uh it's definitely something that I think most people appreciate if they heard. Yeah, the first, you know, the first time at least. All right, I'm gonna take a break because I kind of messed up. I'm gonna switch the batteries and then maybe like okay. yeah, let's start back up. 
As for me, um, I first heard this album maybe in like 2008-ish um, when I was still in high school. And... 10 years after it came out. <laughs> yeah, 10 years after it came out. Hey, man. I mean, I heard Rosa Parks when it was on the radio because it was all over the radio, but I was quite young. And I don't know, it was like... <laughs> 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 he wasn't in elementary school yet. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, was, I was quite young when this came out. I was like, I was like seven, seven years old. So I was like, yeah, give me a pass. So I heard it. I felt like I heard it while I was listening to the Greater Outcast catalog. So I feel like it didn't end up standing out to me as much because I feel like the most iconic outcast songs aren't necessarily on this project like the ones that you first think of when you think of them but when you look at the project as a whole like as a complete body of work it might be their best project from start to finish and you know just conceptually and just like as a listen so i think with time i've appreciated the album more because it's so well put together and there's so little bad moments on this album you know it's just very creative it's very influential the stories are just captivating and well done nothing feels forced or corny it just feels very real and organic and just the way that they're able to use their flows you know where they you know come off be a little bit talk and then come back on it just like gives them that little extra stylistic edge yeah and and people. you know one thing if you look at the you know just looking at the times on the album as far as like how long the length of the song yeah the songs stuff. are kind of long and, and so like you know especially to the to today's standards where you know you would only listen to a song about three minutes but you know a lot of the music that you know you know, especially commercial music nowadays yeah. um, is electronic and you know has kind of um, as you know it's, the, it's not very free flowing yeah it's formulaic yeah, at yeah. this point yeah. especially at this point yeah like, exactly so I mean it's gonna be the drop and it's gonna have we, this build up yeah and you know if you look at the lengths of the songs they're you know go from one minute to start off and then almost five minutes to five minutes to three minutes to five minutes to five minutes to five minutes to four minutes to three minutes to two minutes five minutes to seven minutes to four minutes to one minute skit to an eight minute song to a six minute song so they really let each song um fully develop and so you know they had instrumental solos and um you had just um, right, you know some point. spoken word pieces that were put on there um, by a, you know a couple of different artists, um, uh, including you know George Clinton. Um, yeah, and uh, it just uh, there were, like you said, it didn't feel forced. It felt like they just went in with the intention of. Um, and I know they they took their time on it. They said you know they were established now. They had two albums under their belt. They were you know a successful successful act, and and um, it wasn't like they were just like a one hit wonder anymore. And so there was expectations, but at the same time, I felt like they um, this was really the big. I mean, I was going to say the beginning, but um, this was starting to, you know, you were starting to get the sense of who outcasts really were mm. and that they weren't going to necessarily play by the rules of whatever music was going to come out at the time. Because like, like I said before, 1998 um, was uh, No Limit Records sold 56 million <laughs> albums. And it's just like they had a ridiculous amount of albums released in a really short time. Like when you country. when you think about, and of course there were several albums, but yeah. still for a conglomerate of artists to put out a collection of artists to put out that many, many records, songs under yeah. one umbrella, I mean, and sell that many records, fifty six million is incredible. So like that was what most of the people were listening mm, to at that time, you know, as yeah. far as hip hop fans are, you know, especially people in the, the south. south. Yeah. And so this just gave something really different for people to 
listened to and um while it was hip hop it's, it had its roots in other forms of music as well and then you had um kind of this new yeah. spacey stuff and then you had um yeah so you know it was really futuristic and then you had some stuff that was very funky yeah, it's, I've always think funk like if funk, I yeah, think it, about their but, production you know, stuff yeah but you they had that um, you know the song Synthesizer yeah um, it was very futuristic when it's with the, the intro of the album just like how it starts off you know and it's just kind of like you know got the little choir oh, and yeah um, <laughs> You're not sure really what's going to happen. Apparently, that was a full, complete song at one point. Mm. And they ended up just using that part. And Andre got some, um, uh, I think it was a Celesta or something that from the, from the flea market and just and oh, played right. it on that, on top of, like, it was, um, one of the producers had made that, um, the rest of the track. But uh, it just, you know, very... You weren't really sure what you were going to get into. And then as soon as it starts off, it's, you know, goes into Return of the Gangster. And it's yeah. like. Yeah. That, that beat is just really, like, iconic. Yeah. And, I mean, just how Andre comes in and he, um, because I think, especially Andre of, 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 of the two of them, because considering that he was the one that was starting to wear all these crazy outfits. Yeah, and, that was a And time. Um, people really were questioning him and, and, and Andre, too. Like, and uh, really, um, uh, I mean, Big Boy, I mean, uh, really questioned Big Boy because they're like, why are you hanging out with this you know, yeah, crazy this guy? guy. Like, they're saying your style. <laughs> um, you know, you're the pen player of, of the group. And, yeah. and this isn't, you know, going to work. But there was something about um, like I said, the contrast in their music. I think music that kind of, and I shouldn't say they contradicted each other necessarily always or, or a lot, but like their styles contradict each other. Yeah. Um, and, and, and their approach. So, um, but then again, you know, they still, they still made it work. So like when that song comes on, they're like basically kind of telling people like, I could be whoever, you know, I could be whoever I want. You could, you should be whoever you want. You should not be following trends or, um, or worry, be worried about what people are saying. Like, yeah. do you? And that was really what that song, you know, about was just like, we're going to do us. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, and you're going to like it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, so what do you think were the top tracks for this? You know, this you, know you, you were telling me about this question before, you know, we started. And yeah, it's kind of hard for this it, album because, it, like, when you listen to it, I feel like there's not, like, a bunch of tracks that are, like, bam, 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 stand, like, that jump out at you like that, but they really work well together as part of a system, you know what I mean? Like, they... they... Well, I mean, I, yeah, and I agree with you to an extent. Um, and I will say, I, I feel that the... Um, the... What were we just saying? The... <laughs> Sorry. That's how they work together, but this is oh, oh, okay. editing. Yeah, I know. So, so anyways, how the songs work together, I felt like they were... Um, I, I, I mean, I remember having some of these songs on just, like, mixtapes I had of, like, other songs, like, put together. Um, so, I mean, there were songs that I felt, like, stood out, but not in the sense of, like, that's the song, you know, maybe except Rosa, with the exception of Rosa Parks, but I felt, you know, like you said, it was a whole body of work. So, um, while they did work together, I, I could listen to a lot of these songs separately. And, yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, it, I don't have to hear it as a collection. So it may, it, I don't know if that's what you were saying, but um, I w if that's what you were saying, I would definitely disagree. I feel like I could, yeah. you know, hear these songs individually and like them yeah. a lot. But um, as a collect, I mean, I would say probably we're really listening to it. Uh, the, it's it's hard to necessarily discern a, a standout track. <laughs> well, I, but, I can but, give you some of mine if you wanna. Go ahead. Think. 
Um, for me, like the first standout track is "Return of the of the Gangster." Yeah, yeah, to me, and that's why I was like, I was. This this is what I'm saying. Like, I was like, listen, I was listening to it again last night, and I'm like, dang, this song goes hard. And then I go next, I'm like, this song goes hard. I was like, Rosa Parks. I think Rosa Parks. Skew on the barn. Okay, that one goes hard. Equimini. Oh wow, that's a really different song from the rest of. That goes hard. Whoa, synthesizer like, like jumps out of nowhere. Slump like I, <laughs> like the only thing like I get to slump and I'm like it might have sound cooler if Andre did the hook, but like that was like the only complaint there. Um, West Savannah has like as actually from their first um, their first album and they did the, they wanted to put it on there to kind of give that same old style and then they went into the art of storytelling. Um, and uh, like I was telling you earlier, but the, the the only thing I really didn't like about the second one was the distortion. It was a little bit too extreme, I felt, in my opinion, especially Andre first. Um, <laughs> I mean, the Mama Seats is okay. Spody Ob- Delicious, though, it, I think it falls off just slightly on Mama Sita, So, I mean, the only way I could contrast like a lot of these tracks is just say like that one didn't. Quite jump out as many as much as the other ones, but so Spody Obi did a couple issues like crazy. Um, Y'all scared is okay, it's not as great. And then Nathaniel's kind of the skit there, Liberation is like outs- you know, outstanding. And so Chunky Fire is outstanding. So, like, I mean, I could go more detail on all this tracks, but the the so you can't give standout tracks because they're all standout tracks. Yeah, I mean a lot of they just stand out to me. Like I, you know, like I said, I could put these individually um, on you know a, a you know a mix and like listen so, to them just as hard as like any song that was just like the hardest song of that year or something. Like that. So if you had to pick like three songs from this album, could you do it? Like they just like the three best songs on here. I think it's hard to do that if that's like your favorite yeah. album to, you know, it's a yeah, hard question because yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> it's your favorite album. So like, maybe if it was on an album that like, there was three really good songs on, I could be like, yeah, that was three really good songs. But I mean, I, it would be easier for me to point out like the few songs that yeah, just yeah. weren't as good to me. Like, All right, because nice. I felt like each one held its place for the most part. Um, but if I was to say the, you know, ones that were a little bit lacking were it was probably Mama Sita. Just on the beat, and, and the, the beat, the story was pretty good in it. Um, but the beat was just not as yeah. infectious as the other yeah. ones. And then Y'all Scared was, um, again, it just wasn't, didn't capture me. Um, it wasn't Goody and Mop's best performance for me personally, but. Yeah. Um, I think I like Big Gibbs for some of that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, other than that, everything was fire. And even the skits. Like, yeah, today, I like the skits the a lot, skits, too. Yeah. Even, especially the one with the dudes in jail and he's calling on the phone. That was hard as hell. Yeah. It just gave you some contrast, you know what I mean? And just oh, yeah, so right towards the end. Yeah, yeah, before Liberation. And, yeah, that, I think it had a Liberation right after that was cool. Yeah. The, um, and I felt like the skits were not too long. And they were con- they were like emotion, so it wasn't like I feel sometimes artists have skits that are too long, or the you know it's hard to get the um, what they're trying to get across. Convey, yeah, yeah. and it, it's like you listen to that one time, and then you just like skip. The yeah, next time. yeah, yeah. So yeah, you're yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. I was going to hear the song. Whereas I always felt like I always look forward to like hearing yeah about Andrew, like you know like you know the different. <laughs> There ain't no cut up in here, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and like you know, talking about the the tax on, you know, uh, on the buying the weed, yeah, yeah from California yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah the like, fifteen dollar plane ticket. Yeah, so it's yeah. like there's there's just like always there, it's like there was always something funny and just like like you could repeat like there were like lines that you could repeat to somebody, especially at that yeah. time. I know you were like very young at the time, but like for some that was in, in high school at the time, like there were lines that you could just say randomly, just kind of like how Dave Chappelle like, yeah. got these lines that like you could say, 
um, you know, certain things. Fuck like, your couch, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could say that. And, and you know that's a reference to uh, the Chappelle show. So um, I thought the skits even kind of stood out. <laughs> you know, like, to, that, that's how, like, cohesive it's stuff to me. To, well, this, for so. me personally, since this guy has no standout track, I think that Return of the Gangsta, Rosa Parks, even though it was a single, it like I don't the think that it's that played played out or anything. I could still listen to it. It's great. Listening back to it this time, I don't think that I took Synthesizer as a standout track before. But now listening to it, there's just something so infectious about the song Synthesizer. I don't know. It's, it's been it's kind of stuck in my head. So I, I had to mm-hmm. at least um, point that out. Um, slump, you know, super dope. I really like like the lyricism and the hooks and the instrumentation. It was just that's what we're going to do. Yeah, it's like yeah, that, that's a, um... and I probably my favorite song on there is the artist storytelling part one. It was just oh, like yeah, okay. really dope beat, yeah. really impactful and passionate you know song you know that it's like just you know talking about you know this girl and you know her addictions and you know just his relationship to that and it's just really giving character to this album and you know just giving you that personal story and I don't know this is really something that needs to be said and spoken about so it was just they did a great job about it um and Splute Man, I'm gonna fuck this up. Spody Odi, Dope Delicious. Yeah. Yes. That song is also quite dope, I would have to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so. you know, even that, that the horn line. I mean, yeah. that's just like, you know, again, somebody could just say that and they know exactly what they're referring to. It's like, yeah. ir- 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 uh, you know, um, uh, you can't mistake that and um again that song was long i mean yeah, it was, it was. Long. <laughs> but it's an enjoyable ride. it's a seven minute song um <laughs> and like liberation eight eight minute song and they're not really uh you know traditional hip-hop songs either mm, yeah i can see and, what you're saying um just and, the way like it's like more live it's not like as well, it's not as live, but I mean, they're not, they're more like uh, jazz, funk, you know, in, yeah, that, yeah. in that realm where they're not, they're really kind of stepping outside the box and just rapping. Mm. And, um, you know, I think they kind of showed off more of their um, musical um, tastes in it and that, you know, we're, you know, musicians, we're um, to be taken, you know, in a different context than like just an ordinary rap group. And again, and like, it's like just another example of them pushing the bar of like, let's do something, uh, you know, everybody's trying to figure out and box us in. Again, let's step out and go into and jump into another box, you know, and not another box, but um, get out of the, you know, whatever box they're trying to put us in. Yeah. Surprise, because like, those songs are so, um, I guess, you know, just open-ended and free-flowing. and You don't know exactly, like, where it's going to go next or who's going to come on the song next. Like, with Liberation, you got CeeLo on part of the song, and then you got Eric Badu. Um, so. mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know? And um, that's all my best tracks. And my worst tracks, similar to, to Outlaw, it, Mama Sita is, like, it's... It's not the like a terrible song that I'm like, oh, I gotta skip this song, but it's just like it like the beat wasn't the best, and you know the hook is kind of repetitive, so among like I don't think it lives up to the standards that were set by the rest of the songs on the album. The artist storytelling part two, the distortion, um, kind of wasn't the best for me, and the beat also kind of wasn't the best for me not that there's they're bad songs either it's still pretty good songs but it's just like 
it definitely like lowered a little bit for me there. Off. Yeah, and why are y'all scared? Um, yeah, like like you said before, that that wasn't necessarily CeeLo's high water mark. But I think CeeLo wasn't on that. Wait, so. was there, that? There was Good and Mob, but CeeLo. Yeah. I think it was mostly everybody. Yeah, it was Good and Mob. Good and Mob. Except, yeah, you're right. Six. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. So yeah, that was also not the highest moment on the album, but not to mistake that those are like terrible tracks. But as for me, those were probably like least favorites. Um, now to talk about the legacy of this album, and I guess to talk about the legacy of Outcast in general. Like, well, I mean, I feel this. You know, I was listening to this album, and again, and you know, of course. We had um, Kendrick Lamar's, um, you know, recent release. Had a Who bit also butterfly. had George Clinton. Exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> exactly. So I mean, <laughs> the the in the influence. Now it doesn't sound exactly the same. No. Um, so I'm not trying to say he bit them or anything. Uh, like that yeah, at all. yeah, but, but no, definitely to say yeah. that Kendrick Lamar's not influenced by Outcast is you know even. I, I, I was reading something, um, I was getting ready for this, about how uh, Big Boy didn't want to do the pitched vocals. Like, he was like mm. not a fan of Andre doing these pitched, and then there was, I think, some parts where Big Boy's yeah, um, I, lunch I, I was... pitch. And that ended up being like a huge part of Kendrick Lamar's um, mm. style. So I remember when I first heard Kendrick Lamar, and I was like, sounds like some outcast shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, That's interesting. You know, like, I never thought about that, but once he said that comparison, I was like, like, I can, like, see it now. Yeah. Um, I definitely, when I think of Outkast, like, the first person who comes to my head is Big Crit. You know, just, like, that lyrical Southern artist, even There's maybe so even, many like, J. Cole or, like, you know what I mean? Just to have that, that standard set by outcast you know and i think you know equimini was the album you know because obviously they it wasn't like that was the only piece that influenced those artists but, um the only album that they've had but i felt like equimini was the start of their um broader appeal um and you know each album they picked up more fans because i mean they're each in the i mean when i said that i mean that seriously yeah. even as they you know I remember my um, my aunt when we were up in New York and Hey Ya came on the radio. I was like, hey, have you heard this new group called Outcast? Yeah. I'm like, they've been around for 10 years. Yeah. Like, they're not new. Like, they're, they're, yeah. Seriously, I mean, they've had like, you know, fairly good selling album to the first album like yeah. 10 years ago. Like, she was like, really? And I was like, yeah. yeah. Um, so... I think each release that they have, and I mean, I don't know about you know if they release anything from now on, because after they yeah. you know, released the Love Below and, and um, Speaker Box, it was like very that that was definitely the top. I think you know, yeah. they reached, I but think they only released Idle Wild after that. And it, no, no, uh, yeah. well, big oh, as a group, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're right. Um, they've released some individual projects, but the. Um, but yeah, I think Quim and I was kind of like their, I think, you know, their flagship album to me mm. in the sense that like, that that was like the true turning point where I think that they just like, we're going to do what we want to do. Gonna, they, and I yeah. think people understood it by that point. It was their third release. Each time they did something different. Yeah. But um, this was like, you know. People were, again, trying to box them in and, and like, all right, we're going to do something, you know, what we feel. And the, the live instrumentation, I think, really took it to another level of, like, um, where I think you would usually hear samples. Um, they either used interpretations of samples and, you know, replayed them, which was different. Um, and, and you were hearing some of that in the South. I think that was a more of a Southern thing. Yeah. Um, but there were also songs where I felt like this sounded like sample-ish, 
but you know they weren't sam- they're basically yeah, just making yeah. samples of their own you the know with stuff. their own like loops and stuff like that or, or not even loops but just what it on some of them but um so i i i felt like it was you know they still had that sample set but it sounded more funky sounded more organic sounded more um and i think you know like you said i think from a musical standpoint you could definitely hear that in like, kendrick lamar stuff um and, and other artists as well and i think they've also impacted artists that aren't hip-hop artists too yeah so. i think that you know i don't know if you've heard rory but when i think of him even though he's like a folk hip-hop influence folk mm-hmm. singer like i feel like you can't really not think of andre 3000 when you hear him yeah and and, and you know i both of them but the, the you know their rap style again like you said like bringing that Southern draw, yeah. But um, you know that that you know something different to the mic, and, and, and then like, being like, just from like a persona standpoint too, to be able to be this eccentric person in hip hop and not being like this prototypical gangster stereotype too. Yeah, like, yeah, and like, I, yeah, and I think they they made it okay not to be um, too pop. Or not to be Master P or yeah. uh, Cash Money or you know whoever it was yeah. at the time. So I think they made it okay to be yourself, and I felt like that was, you know, what made them connect with me personally. Yeah. Um, throughout the years, is they always they always were themselves. So they had the ability to connect with um, people outside of just maybe people who experienced, um, you know the uh, african-american experience and stuff like that so um i felt like their equipment i was like kind of an epitome of what the southern experience felt like for not maybe not everything for myself personally but i knew other people if it wasn't me i knew somebody else that had yeah, yeah, um, yeah so i had heard stories or experienced or witnessed stories like this yeah in my lifetime up to that point so it was something i connected with yeah even yeah. though um you know, maybe some of the things even if I was listening to, Ma- you know, when I was listening to Master P and No Limit at the time, like, I had no, you know, I didn't really have any connections with, you know, <laughs> a lot of the stuff that they would say, <laughs> but I was just like it. I just liked it for, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. by my, my ear butchered and stuff. There, there, there were some songs, they had some songs, but not as much as like I used to, um, whoever they used to come out with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We got to <laughs> Yeah, but... Um, 56 million, that's still crazy. Yeah. There's only 52 weeks of the year. Yeah. So to sell a million a week. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's crazy. crazy. But, yeah. So I think that that's going to be the review, man. Thank you for doing this review with me. Um, is there anything that you want to promote or... Well, you... Um, mm-hmm. Have you... Uh, production needs um mixing even if you don't live here in tallahassee if you live somewhere else you need some quality mixing um hit me up um you can either google my name outlaw beats um hit me on facebook or whatever or you can um email me at dynasty music ent at gmail.com again that's dynasty music uh ent at gmail.com um, those are probably the best ways to hit me up. You can hear the you Google, SoundCloud, um, maybe some YouTube. I have work up on, you know, most things. I've been working for a while, so I've, I've mixed most, any, any, most of anything you've heard from this guy <laughs> over here. Yeah. I've, um, mo- I've produced a, a, a couple tracks, but mostly uh, engineering um, for him and uh, produce a lot of people around here, so um, look out, there's a new group, long story short, really good that I'm working on their um, their project right now. So you should definitely check them out when they come out. Speaking of outcasts, <laughs> like, they kind of remind me of them too, but that's a whole other. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean. Peace, everybody. Love the world. <laughs> I'm
sign, vibe in my zone. Hate it on for many reasons unknown, though I just my mind to leave Des alone. No, but Cologne, and I know she alone. Tell life broken, the gas light on. Need an alignment, I'll get later on. Cause my current assignment is found in the thong. Swerving and sliding, been drinking and driving, so gliding. We'll slow when I'm gripping the wheel. Everyone 